Hey, how you doing today? We're gonna to try something a little bit different. I'm gonna do a little experiment on you. Um, I'm gonna get right started right into the video. No intro. We're gonna see how that plays out. Today I want to cast uh, some tools that we're gonna use in the foundry itself. Uh, I'm gonna make sprues. I'm gonna make, actually I'm gonna do, can't if I can pick them up, three sprues at once. Uh, so I've made a I've made patterns for that. I have made a, uh, a runner that I'm going to attach all those sprues into. So they'll all just kind of sit right here like this. Metal will come down across the runner. And as it fills, it will start to fill, will fill the molds from the bottom. Uh, to do that, I also have a little bit longer sprue than I normally use. Uh, my sprue, uh, this is my normal sprue that I use. So you can see the difference in the height because I need to get enough height to get these guys in the box and I need to be able to get this guy out. So that's kind of why this is a little bit longer. It's actually the same same size, uh, but it is taller. So that's it for that. We're gonna get right into the casting here. I'm gonna show you some things, uh, show you my, my green sand, the new green sand that I'm selling, uh, how it works. Some new flasks that I built. Um, some problems with the new flask, and I'll we'll talk about that during the, when I uh, ram it up and do the do the voiceover here. So let's go ahead and we'll get you started on that guy, and uh, yeah, stick around. There's a special offer at the end of this uh, at the end of the video. So this is the drag part of my new flask. Uh, you can see it's it's real it's real long and, and narrow, uh, very very shallow as well. I'm just going to put the runner down here. That's all we're going to put in the. Um, and the uh, drag. This is a new green sand I am going to start using in all of my uh, my videos going forward. This is the same green sand that I'm selling out on my uh, my online store. And I'll put a link to that down below uh, at the end of the video. This stuff is great. It is like it feels like flour. It is so fine. It is so smooth. Um, really, really, really nice stuff. And I get asked periodically, how much water do you put in your sand? You know, you, this is one of those your mileage may vary kind of things because here in Colorado, the it's pretty dry. Uh, our humidity levels are really pretty low. Uh, so I may put more water in than you would. But this is kind of, you see the chart across the bottom here, uh, how much, if you have 10 pounds of sand, you're going to add probably four ounces of water, 20 pounds, eight ounces of water, or, or nine kilograms, you're going to add 235 milliliters of water. So that's kind of the uh, the ratios that I use. And that gets pretty darn close. Again, you're going to have to play with it at your at your location. I already said it earlier, but uh, this is the the runner. I'm going to actually attach the patterns, the the sprues that I'm going to cast, right to the runner here. Uh, so there's not going to be a horizontal gate like we would normally see. It's just going to be uh, the runner coming across in a horizontal fashion, and the parts filling vertically from the bottom up. <laughs> this is my horrible flask. I can't believe I made these the, the alignment pins on here like I did. Don't ever do it like I just did it. It's horrible. Uh, but uh, you can see how tall and narrow it is. And that's one of the reasons uh, I showed at the beginning, I showed that really tall sprue. Uh, I needed that sprue to extend above the top of this box. So I had to make it longer. Now my patterns uh, are not actually staying put inside the, the runner I've got across the bottom. So I'm going to kind of just lay them in there in the right places. And then we're going to try to fill in around them with sand. You can see here, I've got some sand in the bottom of the box. I'm trying to use my ramming tool to get down in there, but it's really, really tight between the sides uh, and between the uh, parts. Here's the problem with my hands. My hands just barely go in there. I mean, really, it's just too, too tight. I had a guy, um, a guy named Mike asked me the other day, he emailed me and said, hey, how big are your flasks supposed to be? How much sand is supposed to be around the part? Well, I can tell you right now, more than what I've got here. <laughs> this is this is way too tight. You know, I guess if you're building a flask to, to mold in, you want enough room to work in. Uh, that's a, another key factor. Nice thing about this view that I've got, it is a very nice view of me cutting a pouring basin. I also had someone ask me the other day about pouring basins. Uh, a friend of mine had tried to do it, uh, but he had made his basin too shallow, and he actually recognized that after after we talked. Uh, he actually kind of figured it out on his own. But you want this basin to be deep 
deep enough. I do mine about 30, um, 30 millimeters, an inch and a quarter or so deep. It's pretty deep, and it's that nice straight walls going down across down the sides. Uh, what you want is a flat bottom on these things, and you want vertical walls. You want straight up and down walls. If you cut it like a spoon, cut it like a dish, the metal's just going to hit it, and it's going to run out of it. It's going to shoot out of it almost. So now I'm going to cut the uh, ridge in here. I'm just using a little, uh, I'm not sure what this thing came from. This came from a 3D printer, I guess. This little spatula, flat bladed thing. It's great for cutting straight lines. Uh, nice, thin, flat blade. You can see the ridge that I'm forming now. Um, you know, I was told the ridge should be 10 millimeters off the bottom, uh, 10 millimeters off from the top. I, you, know, you know what? It's got to be high enough to stop the vertical splash of metal when it hits the bottom of the basin. That's the intent of the ridge, to stop that movement horizontally across the, um, the bottom of the basin and then shooting right down into the sprue. So with the ridge there, we want it tall enough to go ahead and fill, start filling upward instead of filling, you know, just shooting across sideways. Uh, fill it upwards, get it to where it's running over the top of the ridge in a nice controlled manner. Uh, the basin size, again, doesn't really matter how big it is. It can be as big as you want. Bigger is going to give you a bigger target, a little more forgiving target. Uh, smaller is going to use less metal, right? So it's all what you're comfortable with. But the important part is you have to have the straight walls, flat bottom, and you want to put that ridge in there to stop that splash of metal from going directly down the sprue when you start pouring. I pull the, pull the uh, runner out here. You can see how clean the mold is. Uh, it, it, again, it's just the sand is really, really nice. Uh, which you can barely see on the top edge here is I'm just taking a spoon and trying to dig out all of those sprues that are, that are sitting below the level of the sand. I just stuck a screw in the, um, in the sprue here. What I want to be able to do is I want to twist this guy. I'm not going to wrap it back and forth. I don't want to deform the shape of the sprue. I want it to maintain its shape, so I'm going to rotate it and pull it straight out very carefully not to be messing up the sides. This is the wrapping tool that uh, we made in the last video. You can see how I'm going to use it here. I've got a screw stuck in the, uh, the pattern, and I'm just going to lightly tap a couple of directions here, and it pops right out of there. Nice and easy. The nice thing about this wrapping tool is it's really light. It doesn't transfer a ton of energy into the pattern. So we're not going to just form the pattern or the mold by uh, hitting it too hard. Get a nice generous blowout, and we will get this thing closed up for, for pouring. I rotated the mold here um, so you guys would have a nice clean view of the pour. Unfortunately, this really should have been all about me and not about you. <laughs> because I can't see what I'm pouring when it's in this, in this orientation. And you're going to see when I pour... I have a little bit of trouble keeping that sprue full. I think I do keep it full, but um, just barely, just barely. Okay, here comes the pour. You can see, I know, first of all, I should add some angle on there to protect the wood. But you can see the sprue is, it's, I think it's full, but it just wasn't, it was darn close. I'm gonna play this back again in slow motion. And I want you to know just a couple of things. You can look at, you can keep an eye on that sprue if you like, but look at the order in which the uh, the the patterns, the mold actually fills. Starts with the back end first, moves towards me. You know, each one filling uh, after the next. I think that's kind of interesting. I think that's due to the pressure inside that runner. All of the pressure is down at the end of it where it's hit the spin trap. And the next place it's going to go is it's going to go straight up in that last one. As the pressure starts to build, it'll come up the next one, and then so on as it comes all the way back towards me. So here it is, out of the sand. Uh, I want you to notice the finish on the upper part of those sprues. Uh, really, really nice. The bottom part, eh, not so good because I wasn't able to get down there and ram that sand as tightly as I would have liked. And we're talking, I'm not talking about ramming really, really hard. I'm just talking about getting it rammed in there nice and smooth. And I wasn't able to get that in the bottom part. But the top part, you can see there, is just really, really nice. I bring it up close here. You can see how smooth those, those things finished out. That is right out of the sand. That is with me not, I didn't touch them with anything. It's just right out of the sand. 
All right, well, here they are <laughs> in all of their glory. <laughs> Actually, you know what? If I'm looking at them like this, they look darn good. These are nice looking castings. I look at them down here, eh, <laughs> not so much. <laughs> and that, that brings me to the special offer. Um, I'm going to put those up on my website. Uh, they are up there now on plmfoundries.com. Uh, they are going for $25 a piece. I am going to make that a special offer. Ordinarily, I think I'm going to charge. If, I, if, if these have reasonable demand, uh, I'm going to go ahead and put them up, but I'm going to normally charge $35 a piece because they will be in a nice, they will look nicer, they will be smoother all the way down and won't require uh, work on your part to actually use them. So that's the special offer. Those three sprues will go for $25. After that, they're going to be $35. So if you want one, get it now. You better get in there in a hurry. The green sand that you saw me use uh, is available on the website as well uh, at plmfoundries.com. So check it out. You saw the finish that came out of this stuff. It is, it's nice stuff. I'm, I'm playing with it right now. That's what I'm, <laughs> why I keep leaning over. It, uh, it's, it's nice sand. It, nothing that I did. It's just the sand that I'm able to get is good stuff. So there you go. That's, uh, that's it for this week. Uh, you know, I always say it'd be a blessing. You know what? Do something nice for somebody, just unexpectedly nice. Uh, it's amazing how it will make them feel and how it will make you feel. So go do that. And as always, you guys, you guys have a great day.